Nigel Lawson, Baron Lawson of Blabby, PC is a British Conservative politician and journalist. He was a Member of Parliament representing the constituency of Blabby from 1974 to 1992, and served in the Thatcher Cabinet from 1981 to 1989. Prior to entering the Cabinet, he served as the Financial Secretary to the Treasury from May 1979 until his promotion to Secretary of State for Energy. He was appointed as Chancellor of the Exchequer in June 1983, and served until his resignation in October 1989. In both cabinet posts he was a key proponent of Thatcher's policy of privatisation of several key industries and deregulation and oversaw the Big Bang launched in London on October 27, 1986. Lawson was a backbencher from 1989 until he retired in 1992, and now sits in the House of Lords. He is the father of Nigella Lawson, a food writer and celebrity cook, and of Dominic Lawson, a journalist. Early life Lawson was born in 1932 to a wealthy Jewish family living at Hampstead. His father, Ralph Lawson, was the owner of a commodity trading firm in the City of London, while his mother, Joan Eliza Davis, was also from a prosperous family of stockbrokers. His paternal grandfather, Gustav Leibson, a merchant from Itau, changed his name from Leibson to Lawson in 1925, having become a British citizen in 1911. Lawson was educated at Beechwood Park School and Westminster School and Christ Church, Oxford, where he gained a first-class honours degree in philosophy, politics and economics. Lawson carried out his national service as a Royal Navy officer, during which time he commanded a fast patrol boat, HMS Gate Charger. Lawson began his career as a journalist at the Financial Times in 1956, writing the lexicon column. He progressed to the positions of city editor of the Sunday Telegraph in 1961 and editor of the Spectator. Early political career, Lawson stood unsuccessfully at the 1970 general election for the Eton and Slough seat before becoming Member of Parliament for Blabby in Leicestershire in February 1974, which seat he held until retiring at the 1992 general election. While in opposition, Lawson coordinated tactics with rebellious government backbenchers Jeff Rooker and Audrey Wise to secure legislation providing for the automatic indexation of tax thresholds to prevent the tax burden being increased by inflation. In government. Equals financial secretary to the Treasury equals, on the election of Margaret Thatcher's government, Lawson was appointed to the post of financial secretary to the Treasury. Although this is the fourth-ranking political position in the UK Treasury, Lawson's energy in office was reflected in such measures as the ending of unofficial state controls on mortgage lending, the abolition of exchange controls in October 1979 and the publication of the medium-term financial strategy. This document set the course for both the monetary and fiscal sides of the new government's economic policy though the extent to which the subsequent trajectory of policy and outcome matched that projected is still a matter for debate. Equals Secretary of State for Energy equals, in the cabinet reshuffle of September 1981, Lawson was promoted to the position of Secretary of State for Energy. In this role his most significant action was to prepare for what he saw as an inevitable full-scale strike in the coal industry over the closure of pits whose uneconomic operation accounted for the coal industry's business losses and consequent requirement for state subsidy. He was a key proponent of the Thatcher government's privatization policy. During his tenure at the Department of Energy he set the course for the later privatizations of the gas and electricity industries and on his return to the Treasury he worked closely with the Department of Trade and Industry in privatizing British Airways, British Telecom, and British Gas. Equals Chancellor of the Exchequer equals, after the government's re-election in 1983, Lawson was appointed Chancellor of the Exchequer in succession to Geoffrey Howe. The early years of Lawson's chancellorship were associated with tax reform. The 1984 budget reformed corporate taxes by a combination of reduced rates and reduced allowances. The 1985 budget continued the trend of shifting from direct to indirect taxes by reducing national insurance contributions for the lower paid while extending the base of value-added tax. During these two years Lawson's public image remained low-key, but from the 1986 budget, his stock rose as unemployment began to fall from the middle of 1986. 
Lawson also changed the budget deficit from a £10.5 billion in 1983 to a budget surplus of a £3.9 billion in 1988 and a £4.1 billion in 1989, the year of his resignation. During his tenure the rate of taxation also came down. The basic rate was reduced from 30% in 1983 to 25% by 1988. The top rate of tax also came down from 60% to 40% in 1988 and the four other higher rates were removed, leaving a system of personal taxation in which there was no rate anywhere in excess of 40%. In 1986 the City of London's financial markets were deregulated in the so-called Big Bang. In an interview in 2010 Nigel Lawson said that an unintended consequence of the Big Bang was the financial crisis of 2007 to 2008. The trajectory taken by the UK economy from this point on is typically described as the Lawson boom by analogy with the phrase the barber boom, which describes an earlier period of rapid expansion under the tenure as Chancellor of Anthony Barber and the Conservative government of Prime Minister Heath. Critics of Lawson assert that a combination of the abandonment of monetarism, the adoption of a de facto exchange rate target of three Deutsche Marks to the pound, and excessive fiscal laxity unleashed an inflationary spiral. Lawson, in his own defense, attributes the boom largely to the effects of various measures of financial deregulation. Insofar as Lawson acknowledges policy errors, he attributes them to a failure to raise interest rates during 1986 and considers that had Margaret Thatcher not vetoed the UK join the European exchange rate mechanism in November 1985 it might have been possible to adjust to these beneficial changes in the arena of microeconomics with less macroeconomic turbulence. Lawson also ascribes the difficulty of conducting monetary policy to Goodhart's law. His tax cuts, beginning in 1986, resulted in the Lawson boom of the British economy, which had halved unemployment from more than 3 million by the end of 1989. However, this led to a rise in inflation from 3% to more than 8% during 1988, which resulted in interest rates doubling to 15% in the space of 18 months, and remaining high in spite of the 1990 Euro 1992 recession which saw unemployment rise nearly as high as the levels seen before the boom began. Lawson opposed the introduction of the community charge as a replacement for the previous rating system for the local financing element of local government revenue. His dissent was confined to deliberations within the cabinet, where he found few allies and where he was overruled by the prime minister and by the ministerial team of the department responsible. The issue of exchange rate mechanism membership continued to fester between Lawson and Thatcher and was exacerbated by the re-employment by Thatcher of Sir Alan Walters as personal economic adviser. Lawson's conduct of policy had become a struggle to maintain credibility once the August 1988 trade deficit revealed the strength of the expansion of domestic demand. As orthodox monetarists, Lawson and Thatcher agreed to a steady rise in interest rates to restrain demand but this had the effect of inflating the headline inflation figure. Equals resignation equals, after a further year in office in these circumstances Lawson felt that public articulation of differences between an exchange rate monetarist, as he had become, and the views of Walters were making his job impossible and he resigned. He was succeeded in the office of Chancellor by John Major. Lawson's tenure as Chancellor of the Exchequer was longer than that of any of his predecessors since David Lloyd George, who served from 1908 to 1915. This was subsequently passed by Labour's Gordon Brown. Retirement After retiring from front-bench politics, Lawson decided, on his doctor's advice, to tackle his weight problem. He is 5 feet 10 inches tall. He lost 5 stone from 17 stone, or 238 pounds to 12 stone, or 168 pounds a euro in a matter of a few months, dramatically changing his appearance, and went on to publish the best-selling The Nigel Lawson Diet book. On July 1, 1992 he was given a life peerage as Baron Lawson of Blaby, of Newnham in the county of Northamptonshire. In 1996, Lawson appeared on the BBC satirical and topical quiz show Have I Got News For You and as a former chancellor he had held the highest political office of any guest. He occasionally appears as a guest on his daughter Nigella's cookery shows. 
Lord Lawson serves on the advisory board of the conservative magazine Standpoint. Equals corporate roles equals 2007 Chairman of Central Europe Trust Company Limited 2007 Chairman of Oxford Investment Partners equals expenses scandal equals during the expenses scandal it was revealed that Lawson managed to claim a £16,000 in overnight allowances by registering his farmhouse in Gascony as his main residence. Equals position on global warming equals, Lawson is a global warming skeptic and believes that man-made global warming is exaggerated. In 2004, along with six others, Lawson wrote a letter to the Times criticizing the Kyoto Protocol and claiming that there were substantial scientific uncertainties surrounding climate change. In 2005, the House of Lords Economics Affairs Select Committee, with Lawson as a member, undertook an inquiry into climate change. In their report, the committee recommend the HM Treasury take a more active role in climate policy. The objectivity of the IPCC process is questioned, and changes are suggested in the UK's contribution to future international climate change negotiations. The report cites a mismatch between the economic costs and benefits of climate policy, and also criticizes the greenhouse gas emission reduction targets set in the Kyoto Protocol. In response to the report, Michael Grubb, chief economist of the Carbon Trust, wrote an article in Prospect magazine, defending the Kyoto Protocol and describing the committee's report as being strikingly inconsistent. Lawson responded to Grubb's article describing it as an example of the intellectual bankruptcy of the climate change establishment. Lawson also said that Kyoto's approach was wrong-headed, and called on the IPCC to be shut down. At about the same time of the release of the House of Lords report, the UK government launched the Stern Review, an inquiry undertaken by the HM Treasury and headed by Lord Stern. According to the Stern Review, published in 2006, the potential costs of climate change far exceed the costs of a program to stabilize the climate. Lawson's lecture to the Center for Policy Studies think tank, published November 1, 2006 criticizes the Stern Review and proposed what is described as a rational approach, advocating adaptation to changes in global climate, rather than attempting mitigation, that is, reducing greenhouse gas emissions. Lawson also contributed to the 2007 documentary film The Great Global Warming Swindle. In 2008, Lawson published a book expanding on his 2006 lecture to the Center for Policy Studies, An Appeal to Reason, A Cool Look at Global Warming. He argues the case that, although global warming is happening and will have negative consequences, the impact of these changes will be relatively moderate rather than apocalyptic. He criticizes those alarmist politicians and scientists who predict catastrophe unless urgent action is taken. The book has, in its turn, been criticized by the IPCC, HM government's chief scientific advisor, Sir John Beddington, is reported to have told Lawson privately that he had incorrect and misleading claims in the book. In July 2008 controversy was again incited when the conservative magazine Standpoint published a transcript of a double interview with Lawson and Tory policy chief Oliver Litwin, in which Lawson described Litwin's views on global warming as pie in the sky, and called on him and the Tory front bench to get real. On November 23, 2009 Lord Lawson became chairman of a new think tank, the Global Warming Policy Foundation, a registered education charity. In 2011, Bob Ward claimed the GWPF was spreading errors, and the facts Lawson repeats are demonstrably inaccurate. Ward referred to Lawson's many times repeated statement that the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change Worst Case Scenario predicted the rise in third world living standards in 100 years would be limited to just nine times current levels. In fact, said Ward, the IPCC Fourth Assessment Report estimates living standards will rise by a factor of 66 but crucially makes no assessment of how it will be affected by climate change. Ward also criticized Lawson for repeating in a 2010 BBC radio debate that Antarctic ice volumes were unchanged even after his error was highlighted by his opponent, Professor Kevin Anderson. According to Ward, 
Lawson provided no evidence to back his claim which is contrary to satellite measurements and he similarly incorrectly implied that the correlation between CO2 and sea levels was uncertain as sea levels were rising more slowly since 1950 than before it. The current sea level rise is accelerating. Given the Charity Commission requires that statements by campaigning charities must be factually accurate and have a legitimate evidence base Ward suggested that they review the GWPF. Lawson's son Dominic Lawson is also a climate change skeptic, taking a similar viewpoint as his father in his columns in The Independent on Sunday. Equals economy equals, Lawson has been a critic of David Cameron's coalition government economic policy, describing spending cuts consultation plans as a PR ploy. In November 2011 he called for the orderly dismantling of the euro. In the media. Lawson was interviewed about the rise of Thatcherism for the 2006 BBC TV documentary series Tory. 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 In 2010, he appeared on the analysis program to discuss banking reform. Lawson explained that the 2007 Euro 2012 global financial crisis was an unintended consequence of the 1986 Big Bang after investment banks merged with high street banks putting depositors' savings at risk. Lawson has also appeared on the Business News Network in Canada to discuss global warming. In a debate with other former cabinet ministers and prominent journalists, Lawson has argued that political life is more in need of ideas and direction than grand political visions. Lawson is known for having coined several notable quotations, including, T. O. Govern is to choose. To appear to be unable to choose is to appear to be unable to govern. Personal and family life, Lord Lawson has been married twice having children from both relationships. To Vanessa Salmon, whose family founded the Leon Corner house chain, from 1955 a Euro 1980. Three daughters, Thomasina, Nigella and Horatia and one son, Dominic, to the copyright Rase Maclia, from 1980 a Euro 2012. One son, Tom and one daughter, Emily. Lord Lawson is a member of the Garrick, Beefsteak and Pratt's clubs. Titles and Styles, Nigel Lawson, Nigel Lawson MP, the RT. Honorable Nigel Lawson MP, the RT. Honorable Nigel Lawson the RT. Honorable the Lord Lawson of Blabby PC. Bibliography, An Appeal to Reason, A Cool Look at Global Warming, Thatcherism in Practice, A Progress Report, The Retreat of the State. The View from Number 11, Memoirs of a Tory Radical, The Nigel Lawson Diet Book, The Power Game, An Examination of Decision-Making in Government, Conservatism Today, Four Personal Points of View by Robert Blake, Peregrine Wasthorn, David Howell and Nigel Lawson, State of the Market. References External links, Hansard 1803 a Euro 2005, Contributions in Parliament by Nigel Lawson, www.berkespeerage.com